It is lunchtime at Lodoi Primary School and all children are getting off their wares to catch a bite. This plate seems to have served this boy for years. To seal the attachment, he had it sewn up. And besides, he can't afford a new one. Well, on this, he's going to receive his lunch. Porridge it is. Feeding, it was first a wild food program, helping us in the feeding program. But since last year, we had a problem. The previous year, there was no food for two terms. It was porridge, CSB and oil. Then last year, they began, this year, they began, first time we had posho beans. It was a complete meal. This term, as we opened, we were only given CSB, which is porridge. Even right now, we have two meals in a day. That is lunch, what they're taking now, porridge. Then uh, they have supper, those ones who sleep, take the same porridge. And sometimes the children are involved in preparation of this meal. They fetch water from across the school. They keep adding to the boiling porridge to prevent it from getting too thick. And as the headmistress moves by, she seems unruffled by whatever is boiling within. This only surprises outsiders. To her, it's a well-being. Well, um, this is exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, this is it. It is lunch time and it's lunch porridge. Yes. Wow, this much. Mm -hmm. Oh, rather this little. Mm -hmm. So a cup, each a cup. Then they stay up to supper time. They take the same. There may not be need for washing this plate after the justice this pupil has done to it by licking it dry. It is an indication that he has enjoyed his meal, despite there being no sugar. This type of feeding has come under scrutiny by nutritionists. The nutrition situation in Karamoji is appalling. When you look at uh, the country health and demographic survey statistics, Karamoja region is failing worst. It's the worst hit by malnutrition. Whereas the country average of stunted children is at about 33.3. .3. In Karamoja region we have about 46, meaning of every 100 children, 46 are stunted. And stunting is uh, an indicator of chronic malnutrition. It happens over a long period. This can't be disputed. Almost every child you look at in Karamoja looks underfed. It's always in the eyes, even when the body is yet to give in. Now, Kato says that most school-going children are neglected when nutrition plans are being formulated. We tend to focus on children zero to two years and mothers, and we leave out that school-going age. And yet, at that period, those children, those pupils, still need high demands for all elements of nutrition of life for all nutrients be it vitamins proteins name it but is it possible to survive the three months in a town on porridge alone that kind of diet is not adequate porridge is it's a cereal whereas i know due to advances in technology we find that uh, the cereals are blended with soy to, to bring in uh, that element of uh, proteins bodybuilding but just looking at it alone is not enough. Kato asserts that there is need for diversity. A diet where someone can have a cereal, a diet where someone can have uh, maybe legumes, leguminous crops, a diet where someone can have uh, meats, a diet where someone can have some eggs, some uh, milk and dairy products. It cannot provide all that is necessary for that person's uh, physical mental and sociological, psychological growth. Although the porridge given to these pupils is fortified, it alone cannot fulfill their nutrition needs. It instead puts them at risk of diseases. We have a situation where children are only being fed on milled products or processed products. So those products, whether you like it or not, they are low in uh, minerals. But what is sad is that uh, deficiencies of minerals and vitamins take long to be noticed. By the time we see it, the damage has already been done. The Irish government has given over 400 million Uganda shillings, about 130,000 euros to World Food Programme, to help with emergency feeding in Karamoja, especially in schools. I'm aware that there are still seasonal food shortages in this region. We need to see together how we can strengthen food security and nutrition through a variety of ways. For example, by putting in place stronger land rights supporting sustainable pastoralism and, where appropriate, 
agricultural development and more effective health interventions. Schools can take initiatives. Yeah, I know it's a hard region, but they can take initiatives to grow some green leaf vegetables in the compounds, which children can, which can be harvested and prepared for, 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 for these children. Unfortunately, they are limited by resources and not favored by the climate. And yet, sustainability is all they crave for. This cannot be guaranteed from foreign aid. Since the beginning of this term, WFP support to schools has, with, has gone down. The reason being they have a problem with their food pipeline and then the donor support is reducing. At the end of the day, so responsibility goes to the government. In a human rights perspective, we have rights holders, we have duty bearers. The government is the overall duty bearer. If a child goes hungry, if a child goes malnourished, ultimately we have to see the blame will have to go to the government. Despite this, education authorities are glad that this little keeps the children in school. Although the headmistress believes the same keeps children away when they don't eat to satisfaction and some perform poorly. A clear indication that they are slowly getting brain stunted. Florence Salimba, NTV.